Hi guys, today we're going to talk all about printing and in my eyes there's no better way to show off a photographer and camera's ability than printing your photos really big. So I want to talk about the why and how of printing. Let's go. So today I'm going to talk all about printing your photos, but not so much the how, I will talk about the how later in the video, but the why. Now why do you print your photos? What's, why don't you just stick your photos up on Instagram or Flickr or Facebook and share them in that way? I mean that's a great way to share your photos, don't get me wrong. But there's something beautiful about printing your photos out, hanging them on your wall, sharing them with your friends or just looking at them in print. They just look amazing. So I'm lucky enough to have got a new printer this week, which is the Canon Pro 1000. And I want to print some photos out on the Canon and show you those photos, show you the process that I go through. But before I do that, I wanna go back a little bit and tell you a little bit about my story and how I got into photography, really. So it all started for me in the dark room. So I started, um, photography when I was around about 14 and I had a dark room in my mum and dad's attic um, and I spent many hours in there processing my FP4 film. I used to process my own film and then printing it and enlarging it. And this is a contact sheet I did of one of my films and it still looks as good now as when I printed it. The archival quality of the, of the paper is just, just amazing. Um, but there's something special about seeing it in print you know, since I decided to do this video, I've gone back through my old black and white photos that I did and it's just so special to look at those and, and to get them out and to get them on the table and share them with friends. It really is amazing. And this is, this is one of the favorite um, photos that I took of actually Yosemite. Um, it was a photo I took when I went to Yosemite. I took all black and white um, photos of my first trip to Yosemite, which was probably around about 24 five years ago actually um, and this was a photo of, of Yosemite Falls and this lone tree at the bottom and there's something about it there's something about the graininess the the the, the tactile nature of, of this print which is just absolutely fantastic I just love looking at it I love looking at this particular image and Yosemite is just an amazing place so you know what's not to like about it so back when, when I started doing photography I went to university and printing became something that wasn't just a hobby for me, but it was a way of me getting through and paying for things whilst I was going through university. I used to print and sell my photos. And this was 20, probably 26 years ago. Um, and I stopped doing it for, for many, many years until I had an exhibition around about four years ago of my landscape prints over the la that I'd taken over the last probably 15 years. And then I sort of fell in love with printing again. I printed all those on an Epson um, 3800. And um, yeah, here's, here's one of the, the, the photos that, that's left over from the exhibition. You know, seeing it printed, signed and mounted is just something really special. And going through the process of when you print your photos out and then hanging them on the wall and deciding on the order of them, deciding on what photos fit well next to the other photos, it's just something that you probably don't do so much when you share photos on social media. So when you show them on Instagram, you show them in a very sort of serial nature. Um, certainly you try and be consistent in the colours and the way that you approach how you're posting those photos, and I suppose if you go through an Instagram post, it's a history of all your photos and your progress over time. But printing them out, seeing that tactile nature of them, and then deciding the order in which they go, whether that be in a book that you print, or maybe on the wall, or an exhibition, or just in your kitchen, or in your study, how you're going to place those photos, it's a great experience. It's, it's something that's really, really good to do. And printing doesn't all have to be done on your own printer. And it doesn't have to be prints. You know, for, for instance, this was the book that I had done to um, go with my e exhibition. I did a very limited number of these. And 
And I thought long and hard about the order of these photos and how they flow in the book and whether they're different seasons, different colors. And, and again, I come back to this book time and time again and look through it. You know, it's a really great bit of history for me. It's a really great thing to do. And sometimes it's good to get away from a device. It's good to get away from just looking at your screen all the time. Um, and to be able to sit down with a book and a cup of coffee and just enjoy those photos that you spent a lot of time taking. So before I get onto the how of printing and talk a little bit more about papers and looking at some particular images and how I might go about printing those images, let me just tell you about a few really key benefits that I see in printing your photos. So first of all, and probably most important, it's just a different experience. It's a different way of enjoying your photos. It's tactile and evokes a very different feeling than looking at your photos digitally. And depending on what paper you use, whether you use gloss or matte or satin, then you can often create a very different feeling for that image. Also, I find it helps you look at your images in a different way, often improving how you may look at composition in your images. What I do is I print out some images from a shoot on maybe some A4, some small paper, and I will leave them on a table and go back to them and have a look at them from time to time. And that sort of approach to looking at my photos rather than just looking at them on the screen all the time is a really good way of seeing things that I can potentially improve in that photo or thinking, well, this photo is just growing on me. Sometimes I wait 24 hours and think, wow, that looks so much better than when I was editing it in Lightroom. Now I've got it printed out. I'm really loving that photo. So the third benefit of printing your photos is you've got all that wall space. After all, if you don't print your photos, where are you gonna look at them? You're gonna probably look at them on your phone most of the time, on Instagram or Facebook or something like that. And it's looking at them in the same place, sat in your studio or looking at them on your laptop, it's just not the same as having them hung on your wall. It just doesn't look as good. And when they're hung on the wall, you've got instant access to them. You, you view them in a different way that it's more passive viewing than active viewing. So there's lots and lots of benefits to printing your photos. Let's go and have a look at that, how we can do it, how we can actually get those photos and make them look amazing on paper. Well, my process has evolved over many, many years from printing in the dark room through to printing um, on inkjet printers like first the Epson 3800 and now the Canon Pro 1000. And I would say that a lot of it comes down to personal choice. So um, whether you like glossy or matte or semi-gloss paper, personally, I prefer matte paper. Uh, there are occasions like um, this image here that um, I prefer a semi-gloss paper because I think it's very dark and I like the way that the semi-gloss paper handles the, the, the detail in the, in the shadow area and this picture is probably 50% shadow area which, which could just be picked up so well. I don't know whether you can catch it just there but the, sh the shadow detail around, around here is just, is just unbelievable. Um, but most of all, most of all I use matte paper um, and not the Epson standard matte paper that you get because that is just not good at all. I would steer away from that. The, 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 the saturation of colors and the D-Max, the blacks in it is just really, really poor and they look washed out and it'll probably put you off matte paper forever. So what I've always used is Hannah Mooley um, matte paper and that is the, um, the Fine Art Photo Rag. It's a, a 308, um, GSM paper so it's quite thick and it's got a, like a really subtle texture to the surface which which I really like and I'll try and show you that on on some of the prints and I also like the Canson paper and I've all, always used the Bar Barata um, Photographique which is like a semi gloss paper so that's my semi gloss paper and that is my matte paper that I use however I've recently started using um, one manufacturer that does a paper um, in, in both these types, and that's Photospeed. Now, Photospeed is used by many, many well-known landscape photographers. Um, it's a UK company, and they are absolutely fantastic. The papers are just so brilliant. Now, I've got, these are actually printed on Photospeed um, paper, and the Photospeed paper I use is, um, 
it's a, a natural soft textured bright white paper so it's nst bright white and i think that's a 315 gram pa gsm paper and it just looks absolutely amazing so again if you just look at this and just look at the the texture and the detail and the contrast of colors i've got it a little bit bigger here on an a2 sheet it it's just it's just lovely i mean you can just pick up here the all the detail in all, all the areas where the fog is around the um, San Francisco Bay area here. Um, the detail in the shadows is still good, which is really difficult for a matte paper. And and yeah, I mean, this this paper just is just fantastic. I absolutely love it. And I'm gonna be using this now as my st standard paper. Let's have a quick look at actually printing some of these pictures. So this photo is one that I shot of Buttermere when I climbed and welcome to Haystacks. The link to the video on this is just in the corner now. It's quite a contrasty scene, obviously, and there is a lot of shadow in this scene. And as I said earlier, then this is a scene that would look best on, in my opinion, gloss or semi-gloss paper. So what I've done is I've chosen the platinum 300 gram blotter paper for this. And I need to, first of all, download the profile for that paper from the PhotoSpeed website, which is easy enough to do. And once I've downloaded it, I can then copy that profile into the correct directory, details of which are given by all the paper manufacturers. I've done the same for um, Canton and Hannah Mooley as well. And once you've done that, you can then use that in the printing process. The first thing to do, the first thing I do when I, when I look at something like this is I quickly click soft proof. And what that does is it applies the profile of a printer paper to that image. So for instance, if I drop down here and I said, I want to look at the um, Baratta paper from PhotoSpeed, I click that and then it gives me an idea of what that might look like when it's printed compared to what it looks like on screen and actually what you can see is it's pretty similar. Um, now the, ideally what you'll do is you get your printer profiled um, by the paper manufacturer um, or by a, somebody that can do printer profiles, PhotoSpeed do that so that, that, that's really handy. Um, I think it's free as well. And then once you've done that, there's a slight loss of details in the shadows so I'm just gonna increase the shadows ever so slightly on the soft proof. And what it'll do, it says, do you want to create a virtual copy for soft proofing? So I can then create that virtual copy. And you can see down here, there's now a virtual copy of that. So basically it's a virtual copy of that image. It's not taking any more room up on your hard drive. It's just the setting. And it will remember on that, when I, when I print it, I'll use this um, soft proofing copy. And it will remem remember my um, inputs for the shadow details there. I may slightly just slightly increase the exposure as well a tiny bit um, and that's pretty much it I'm, I'm not going to do anything else but but that so then I'm going to go to the print module in Lightroom and down the right hand side now you start at the top and go down so the first thing is if you want to you can set your margins up I'm not going to worry about that I'm going to decide on the size of it so in this case I want it to be around about that big um, and if you wanted a specific size then you can set that there I always have a white border because I sign um, and put the edition number and the title at the bottom of the image different people do different things um, and then scroll down here and then we get to the more interesting bit print resolution 300 ppi I always leave it at that um, print sharpening um, I leave it standard and then the media type is either glossy or matte for the Baratta type papers then I will always leave it a glossy I would then look at the profile and make sure that the correct profile is chosen now when you create a, um, a proof copy um, at the bottom here then that proof copy has the actual paper, di di paper type embedded in it so that's really handy um, intent I leave on relative and um, that's it for, for this the final thing I do is go to printer go to the quality and media here 
and then make sure that you've got the right media type. Again, the paper manufacturer will specify the media type that you should choose for that particular paper. In this case, it's photo paper semi-gloss, and then the paper source. With the thicker papers, you tend to use the back manual feed on the paper tray to be able to do that. And then that's it, you just click print. Okay, well, while that's printing, it's raining outside. I think I'm gonna go and make some rocky road and have a nice cup of tea, and then we can have a look at these prints. Let's go. Okay, before I have this and my cup of tea, because it's really sticky, I'm gonna go through these three prints that I've just printed, because they're really good. So, obviously that's the one I just showed before. Um, that I just went through the printing process for on the Baratta paper, and it is, it's just a, it just looks fantastic. The shadow detail here is just really nice. It's a really good representation of what was on screen. Yeah, it's just a, it's just a fantastic print. I'm really, really happy with it. Um, I also printed a couple of others from other shoots that I'd done and vlogged about, which I, I thought would be quite good, um, and trying different papers as well. So this is the, um, this is the smooth cotton paper, um, which is slightly smoother surface and, and um, it's, it's got a little bit of colour to the paper, so it's slightly a cream colour. And I felt that that just went really well with this image of the tree and the and the sort of greens in the image. Um, and, and yeah, it just looks fantastic. Um, with the matte paper, uh, you get a, a, a very sort of uh, pastel type look to them, I think. And this is shown really well in, in this image that I shot when I was in. San Francisco, and, and the links to these, are, by the way, should be coming up on, on the screen um, to these videos. So this was a video at Mount Tamalpay in, video? This was a image at Mount Tamalpay in San Francisco when the fog rolled in off the um, Pacific Ocean. It was just absolutely stunning. And this image printed on, on this uh, NST paper is just, fantastic it just looks so good I'm so pleased with this photo speed paper so what I wanted to do is as a, as a thank you to I'm now over 3,000 subscribers so as a thank you to everybody that subscribed to my channel and watching my videos I wanted to give away a, a, a print so what I'm going to do is I, I'm going to give away one of these limited edition prints. Of all my prints that I do and sell, I only do 20 editions. Um, so I'll sign it um, and um, I'll send that over free of charge to anybody um, that enters the competition. To enter the competition, all you have to do is comment below and why you like to print your photos. Now you don't have to have your own printer, you might send, send your photos off and, and get them back, but why do you like that? What, what really inspires you to print your photos? What's so special to you? So if you put a comment down there, as long as you subscribe to me, you like the video and you comment below, then I'll pick one at random in my next video and I'll send that out to you anywhere in the world. Um, and hopefully you can get it framed, have it on the wall and enjoy it. So. Thanks a lot for watching and I look forward to seeing you next week.